With a level cap of 25, it really doesn't take all that long to finish your leveling journey in Season of Discovery and start seeing what there is to do after that. And whether you're 25 already, have started an alt, or are yet to reach it, there is a surprising amount of content at level cap in Phase 1 of the season. So today I thought I'd go over some ideas of what you can get up to once you are 25. Some of these should be things which every character should consider doing, Others may be a bit more niche and up to you. Either way, despite the level cap being so low, the world of vanilla provides. So let's talk about what you can get up to once you're level capped in Season of Discovery Phase 1. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Boot.dev. Boot.dev is a platform that aims to equip you with the skills to forge a career in back-end development through interactive lessons and learning. What sets it apart is that it treats this a learning process kind of like an RPG with goals, experience, and achievements. You know, in 2023, the median salary for back-end devs in the US was well in excess of 100k, and this position is often remote too. Boot.dev gives ambitious, self-motivated individuals the tools to get fully on board with Python and Go programming languages. The way it does this is through applied hands-on learning where you're going to be writing tons of your own code. In my experience, this is the way to learn this kind of skill. I can relate having self-taught everything that goes into doing YouTube from the editing to the audio, except unlike me, you won't have to spend hours on Google trying to fish up the answer because it's right there for you on the site. Or there's even a Discord to join for more help. It's a career with tons of potential, great earnings, and you can start today at your own pace. Click the link in the description box and use my code WILLE to get 25% off your first payment for boot.dev. That's 25% your first month or your first year, depending on what you choose. Many thanks to boot.dev for the sponsor today. Let's get back to WoW. First up, it has to be content related to PvP. Now, I use the term PvP very loosely, because whilst the new Ashen Vale event is centered around player versus player combat, the amount of it which actually goes on in practice is very minimal. The event has received several changes over the course of the season so far, but at the moment the gist of it is you gather up a bunch of raids with the three mini bosses spawn, rotating between each one and defeating them, and then you go over to the enemy boss, finish them off, and you win. There isn't really a ton of PvP in it. However, the reason this activity is so popular is because of the rewards that you can get. Each of the mini bosses grant 200 rep with your Warsong Gulch faction for anyone nearby and who has engaged them, and all the trash mobs will also give a bit of reputation too. Defeating the enemy boss will give a further 500 rep on top of that. So for a full clear of the event, you're looking in excess of 1000 rep with whatever your Warsong Gulch faction is. It would, no exaggeration, take hours to farm this in Warsong Gulch. So reward wise then, what do we get? At friendly, there's a mount. Oh and by the way, the vendor for the alliance is Southeast Ashenvale, just here and Horde is Northwestern Barrens, just so you know that. But this mount, it moves at 50% speed, you can only use it in Ashenvale, and it will cause you to dismount when you take any damage from anything at all. Damage over time effects, you'll dismount. Fall damage, you'll dismount. It also costs 10 gold. The mount itself is a decent bit of quality of life, and there are a bunch of quests in Ashenvale too, so it's not that bad to get, but I wouldn't say it feels super mandatory. On top of that, at Friendly, there are PvP-oriented head slot items too, but these are only really usable in Warsong Gulch. There are also a number of trinkets that are good for every single class and spec. At Honored, there is a very powerful healer cloak as well as neck and ring items, all of which will last you throughout this phase. And as a side bonus, when we level up in later phases, you can come back here and buy upgraded versions of these items too. But for most players, Honored is really as far as I would advise going at the moment, and it should be a good step in your character's progression. However, there is more, as the PvP ranking system is also available in Season of Discovery. At the moment, you can only get to rank 3, which really isn't all that much of a grind. That being said, you'll want to venture into Warsong Gulch itself to get the best honor gains. The reason to do this is mainly for the cloak reward at rank 3, which is pretty amazing for everyone. You should also know that you can still full stack pre-maids and Warsong Gulch just as you could in vanilla, so if you are going to go into the battleground, I would try and grab a few other people from the LFG who have similar goals, guildy, something like that, just so you don't get completely steamrolled. However, as a new benefit to Season of Discovery, you should know with a ranking system, you can't drop PvP ranks through Decay anymore. So once you hit rank 3, 
you're good for the whole first phase of the season. There is also a new world buff type effect from the Ashen Veil event too that you will get as a drop from random mobs during the battle. This can be turned in over at your faction boss who will be marked on the map when the event is active. As a total side note to this, the Chronoboon Displacer is available on reagent vendors for 20 silver. So this buff alongside others can all be booned and saved for later. So that's the first thing really, get stuck into the Ashen Veil event and queue Warsong for the rank 3 cape if it looks worth for your class. Next there are a bunch of quests for the raid where their quest ID has changed and you may have not noticed them on the map and picked them up yet. Some important ones are Baron Aquanis for the Alliance. This just needs you to get an item from the first boss of the instance and then turn it in over at Obedeen and you'll get a portal all the way down to Ashenvale which saves so much time. An updated quest for the Horde with amazing rewards is Allegiance to the Old Gods. This starts from a note that drops from trash mobs outside of the instance. Apparently you also need the quest The Essence of Akumai for the note to drop though, according to old Wowhead notes at least. Every quest tied to BFD has had their rewards amped up too, so definitely check you've ticked all of them off, or just ask people to share quests when you get inside, you never know you might have missed one. Speaking of quests though, it's also worth checking back to see if you've missed anything which can be started at a low level, but gives a really high level reward. So I'm speaking from experience on this, meaning it's kind of going to be geared towards Alliance, but if there's anything similar for Horde, do let me know below. The first example I have is an unsent letter which drops from Van Cleef in the Dead Mines. This eventually wants you to go and defeat an NPC inside of the Stockades, and then in time will award the Seal of Rin, which is one of the best rings you can use for a very long time. There is an even more specific quest, literally just for Warlocks on Alliance. I mean, I see enough Warlocks out there, so I figure I'll give it a mention. And that's to complete the quest, A Noble Brew. You have to be level 25 to pick this up, and it will have you go into Duskwood as well as the Wetlands to collect some reagents. After you've handed the quest in and then done the follow-up, a new quest will appear on the mini-map from the Warlock Trainer in Stormwind called You Have Served As Well, which will award you the Dread Mage Hat which aside from being possibly the most warlocky looking helm you can get, is also pretty good for level 25. Overall for gear there are many many sources of it from quests, dungeons, the raid, pvp and so on. A good option to really check over all your options from the various sources of gear at 25 is the site 60 upgrades which has a season of discovery section. You can either autofill it to get an idea of what kind of gear is solid for your character, or if you're missing an armor piece you can click on that item and then scroll down and see what the available options are. More often than not there are different choices for each faction so I would recommend giving this a look and seeing what you can find. Chances are there will be an item you can get hold of and it might even be easier to get than you expected. Speaking of gear there are a few new epic items called Void Touched Gear. In order to get these you need 100 in tailoring, leatherworking or blacksmithing to craft them, as well as having used an elixir of coalesced regret, created by alchemists, next to a dead cultist nearby the entrance to BFD. In short, this will lead you on quite a long quest chain into the raid and across several zones for both factions. And at the end you will get a shard of the void which can be used to upgrade a few rare crafted items into their epic versions. These epic versions are super powerful, have on hit effects, as well as having bonus hit. All of these things are amazing to get this early on. Of course doing this will take up one of your primary professions, but it will provide you with a bis item. And this could be an indication of how Blizzard will handle some gear moving forwards, because back in vanilla certain items such as Lionheart Helm, the Bloodvine robes and so on, were made by players with certain crafting professions. So we could very well see new items in the future as well being made where it's worth sticking with one of these main crafting professions. Next is going to be making gold. It is vanilla after all and gold matters. By far the easiest way that any player can keep making gold after 25 is just by carrying on questing. Since we're at the level cap the XP to gold modifier is now in the game. So even regular quests are often rewarding over one gold. And as much as you may think but what about when the level cap is raised to 40 answer me this hypothetically if you were alliance have you ever cleared out ashen vale or stone talon mountains when you were leveling i sure know i haven't because during these early levels dungeons are plentiful enough to where there's a good extra amount of xp hanging about 
I'm not quite as sure what the Horde alternative to these examples would be, but you know what I mean. Vanilla quests just send you all over the map, and whilst making some cross-world journey wouldn't be worth it to complete a green quest, when that quest and several others in the area could give you a few gold, maybe that changes things for you. One of the more time-consuming runes to get will be from a goblin in Ratchet called Grisby who needs a whole shopping list of items before he's willing to part with his runes. Now, you can buy everything he needs off the auction house, or you can get out there and start farming, because chances are you will not have completed this by the time you're level 25. He needs 24 fish oil, these are dropped from high level murlocs, 16 shredder turbochargers. You can get these by using a shredder auto salvager unit on shredders in Stone Talon Mountains. These are made by engineering, and the schematic to make the auto salvage units themselves is from Sneed in the Dead Mines. Again, everything here is tradable. The shredder turbochargers are not a 100% drop rate so bring more than 16 auto salvage units. I did it myself and I needed about 20 to 22, I think. After that, you need 20 Dark Iron Ordnance from the Dark Iron Dwarves up at Dumbo in the Northern Wetlands. This will depend big time on how your server is for how contested these farming spots are, as well as how much they go for on the auction house. For me on Wild Growth EU Alliance, the Dark Iron items were the cheapest by far, followed by the fish oil, which I did myself from Murlocs and Hillsbrad, and I also made my own auto salvage units from engineering and ended up making some gold selling excess ones. Either way though, whether you choose to just buy it from the auction house with gold or go out there and farm, this rune should keep you busy for a while. Next up is of course to finish your rep grant honored with the Azeroth Commerce Authority or Juratar Supply and Logistics. This is a new reputation introduced with Season of Discovery and in short, whilst you're out in the world, you will occasionally find waylaid supply crates that can be filled with items. You can then hand these crates in outside any auction house at a faction capital for a small amount of reputation and silver, or you can fill them with whatever they need and you'll get a much bigger bonus. I would suggest filling these crates to the best of your ability because every class has a rune locked behind being honoured with this new rep. You also get a cheap 10 slot bag at friendly and a less cheap but also handy 12 slot bag at 25. And this does feel like a big grind at first but once you're getting the tiers of crates you receive at a higher level, when you fill them and hand them in they give a huge 800 reputation each. And friendly to honoured is only 6k rep so really it's not as bad as it initially seemed to me. I'm sure new things will be continued to be added with this reputation in future phases too, so get it to Honored and get your runes and bags. Speaking of bags, there is another one you can get as well. Unfortunately, with the timing of this video, you can't get it at the moment, but you will be able to as of the 8th of January 2024, as that should be the next starting date of the Dark Moon Fair. Also, the next Darkmoon Fair will be in Elwyn Forest. For 50 Darkmoon tickets, you can get your hands on a 14-slot bag named the Darkmoon Storage Box. It's unique, of course, though, so don't go over investing in this. As for how you get the tickets, they're from handing in a variety of items, which I will show you here now. At the moment, though, we can only access the Tier 1 and Tier 2 hand-ins. The Tier 1 hand-ins are from very low-level items and award one ticket each. From a cost to ticket ratio, these don't seem worth from what I can see on my realm. An example of a tier 1 hand in is 5 small fairy paws for 1 ticket. Not very good. The tier 2 hand ins are a bit higher level. For the animal parts, there will be 5 torn bear pelts. The upside here is that each tier 2 gives 4 tickets, so the cost to ticket ratio should be better. Again, there are a bunch of different items to hand in, and you don't need any certain profession to access any hand-ins either. We're just being limited at the moment by professions being capped at 150 and not being able to farm higher level mobs. Also, there should be a quest you can pick up in Ironforge or Orgrimmar to get 5 tickets for free the first time you visit the fair. I couldn't see this quest when I went to check, so it may not be active, but I thought I'd let you know about it. But all in all, assuming we do get 5 tickets for free, you would need 11 tier 2 hand-ins and at least 1 tier 1 for the bag. Is that worth it? Well, that is going to depend on your server. Or you could just go and farm it yourself if you wanted. Either way, this is something to go and farm if you want to do it. 
And finally, we have the usual bits to tick off for the phase if you're really looking to set up your main for later stages to come. First thing to do here is definitely capping out your secondary professions. This season is about discovery. Blizzard very well could add in new content which makes fishing, cooking, and why not even first aid far more relevant. And to be fair, it takes all of 10 minutes to cap out cooking and first aid just from throwing some money at the auction house. Fishing is going to take you longer, that's for sure, but if you want to have everything done, well, it's something to do. Of course you'll want to finish getting all your runes. You should have 12 runes before you've seen all the content in this phase, and each new phase will come with new runes and rune combinations. There will be some runes you have at the moment where you think this feels kind of weak, but it could be part of a crazy new setup in the future. So absolutely finish up your runes, at least on your main character. And if you are happy with everything I've gone over here, you've quested for gold, you've got your void touch gear, you've raided, you've done the PvP objectives, you've got your professions capped and you have all your runes, well, I guess that's that character sorted. And that's why it's really not a bad amount of content for just being level 25. And then maybe you think, hmm, this other class looks decent, and then you can do it all over again. But that's just what I found to do at 25 so far. If I had to prioritize anything, it would be getting your runes, farming some gold, and then going from there. Of course, Blizzard will be raising the level cap to 40 at some point in time, and we are still very early into the season. So whatever point you're at, you still have plenty of time to get everything done. That is all I have today though. Let me know what you thought and whether there's anything else you could be getting up to at 25. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. And I'll see you on the next one very soon.